So they are very unusual. And you only find these these constructions on uh, the northwest of Scotland. So these are two of the finest examples. On the mainland, they are the two best. Do you use the dogs to get them in? Oh, I wouldn't manage anyway. How many sheep have you got here? About 600. My name is Jeremy Norman. I'm the principal owner of Soho Gym. And before that, I was started the world famous Heaven Nightclub. I'm Derek Frost, and professionally, I used to be an interior designer. I met Derek when he was 25 and I was 29, and we've been together ever since. I heard on the radio someone saying that spring travels up through Britain at the pace of a walking man. And I thought that was an intensely romantic notion. Every summer, Derek and Jeremy charter Kalani, an 80-foot twin-screw diesel motor yacht. Usually, they cruise the Mediterranean. This journey will be different. They'll start at the very tip of England, which is the Scilly Isles. And from there, they'll go up the Bristol Channel to South Wales. And from South Wales, right around the coast of Wales, across the Irish Sea to Northern Ireland. Then, up the coast of Northern Ireland, right to the very top, to Raitland Island, and then across to the Mull of Kintyre. They'll then proceed up the Inner Hebrides to Ullapool, taking in all the famous islands, and then from Ullapool to the Outer Hebrides, and from there on to St Kilda. Hopefully, if we make it. Previously, dolphins paid a visit. They're called in. <laughs> Bottlenose, bottlenose dolphins, big ones. And a shopping trip ended in a race. <laughs> Yet another useless lobster. Oh, come on, Debbie, you're a bloody pessimist. I'll be them. You're not serious? What have we got? Lobsters! All oh, right, yeah. yeah. We actually got some. Look, is that a lobster in there? Kalani slipped anchor the previous night and is now making the passage from Armadale on Skye to the Kyle of Loch Alsh. Once again, they pass the Eilean Ban Lighthouse, standing proud in the morning mist. As Kalani makes her way through the narrows between the Isle of Skye and the mainland, her passengers awake. First mate Dimmy helps them start the day properly with a pot of tea. Let's take it here, that's perfect. That's wonderful. Thanks, Dimmy. Welcome. Everyone for As the passage takes them through dangerous and rocky waters, they take full advantage of a flood tide. But we know that we're, you know, we're, we're sailing into dangerous waters, um, with dangerous currents, high winds, big swells, lots of rocks, all the dangers that a mariner um, has to be aware of. Exactly. And we've got a good, good, excellent master mariner here, and Captain Tim, so we should be all right. No problem at all. How many knots? Well, here it'll probably be about a knot, 1.5, but up in the narrows it should be around about seven. seven six, knots. seven knots, yeah. Heavy, Runs up to eight knots. Right. The tide, north or south. We're catching the back end, the last hour of the flood tide. So she'll start to simmer off 
Yeah. Now the danger in the, in the back end of the flood is that it, the edges of these banks are fringed with rocks and what it tends to do in the end of the flood is set you onto the western shore. Okay. So you've got to be very aware, you'll probably be steering maybe 15, 20 degrees off. No, just to grab your way out. Precisely, no. grab your way out. There's nothing to do but to enjoy the passage. It's a beautiful, brisk spring day. As Kalani forges north, the landscape is an ever-changing panorama of mountain and valley. Soft, verdant rolling hills and the occasional dwelling slide by, turning at times to a canvas of muted mauves and greens. In the distance, the sky bridge which connects Carl of Lokalsh to the Isle of Skye is shimmering in the hazy spring sunshine. Once anchored, Dimi and Rowan put down the pots. Optimistic that their luck has turned, they bait the traps with mackerel in an attempt to repeat the previous day's success. Uh, she's on the bottom now. Derek and Jeremy discuss the imminent arrival of new guests. We're just at due south of the Kyle of Loch Alsh in a bay called Beastie. Loch Na Beastie. And it's the 4th of June. Let me just find that's right, 4th of June. And when do our next guests come on board? The 6th. Okay, and the next guests after that? They leave. They leave. On the 11th. Where do they leave? Other port. That's what we'd say. That's where Rob's getting off as well, isn't it? Right. Yeah, Rob. Okay, so we've got to hang around here basically until the 6th when we pick them up. So I think we should uh, we should stay in this whole area here, which has plenty to do for two days. And then when we pick them up, we'll spend the night of the 6th here. 7, 8, 9, we leave them at the tents at Alapool. With the course charted for the next few days, they head off in the rib to meet Alex and Lizzie Cato. Alex and Lizzie will join them on a visit to the historic brocks at Glenelg, which date back to the Iron Age. And then come off the starboard, head to that base. It seems to be a very tightly compacted dry stone construction. A very definite shape to it, a sort of wasp waist shape, rather like a lime kiln. Um, the door has got a big stone lintel and very large stones uh, down either side of the jams. Uh, a very narrow entrance uh, with a little, what looks like almost a gatehouse, uh, where they could have been two sets of doors. They are very unusual, and you only find these these constructions on uh, the northwest of Scotland. There's How no, many of them are there? Altogether? About five hundred. About five hundred. But there are very, there are none that are in the. Uh, there's one other that has the quality of construction 
that we can still see, you know, uh, and that's on Scott and uh, up on the Orkneys. So these are two of the, the finest examples. On the main, they, they are the, the two main best, main. by far. Excellent. Do well, we know what happened in the middle of the rock? Is there any evidence as to what went on? Was it domestic space? It was, a, yes, a it, was, it was domestic space. It was a space probably to retreat into, so there'll be bones and uh, detritus from people living, but there's nothing. Yeah. There's no obvious defensive. And no wells of any sort, so they weren't expecting siege. I don't think so. No. Let's look at the construction yeah. over here. The steps come up inside the wall. So the construction method has effectively little alleyways created within the wall and the steps are built into the wall so that they rise and then you get non-usable space because it's uh, beehive shaped. And then the other thing is they think they had, uh, uh, they use wood uh, yeah. higher up yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to effectively create a balcony that you can yeah. then yeah. walk around and use, have more usable space because there's clearly no space up there. Yeah. It's a different variety of broom. It's Just like a, a sort of, of very broom. fancy kind of version. The second rock, Dun Trodden, lies just 100 metres away from the first, Dun Telv. And there's the, the steps are just in the wall here. But it's exactly the same construction. Yeah. It curls up. And then the thin fill the smaller stones. It's amazing construction. I mean, it's a perfect place to have the brock because you've got these fields here which are protected, ringed by hills all round. So you have your sheep on the hills, you have your corn or whatever you're growing in the fields, and your, your rye cattle. and your cattle, your brocks for defence, and then you're in a hidden valley where, you know, unless somebody knew you were here, they could bypass you without even knowing this valley existed. A perfect little defensive ring. Well, we can see the Sandeg Islands there. And just inshore of the Sandeg Islands um, is the beach Camus Fierna, where Gavin Maxwell, the author, lived uh, with his otters and wrote Ring of Bright Water, which was one of the most successful books of the, the early 60s. Down on the lock, Rob speeds towards them in the rib, ready to take them back to Kalani. Across the lock is the castle Eileen Donnan, originally built in the early 13th century as a defence against the Vikings. It was later destroyed by the English. It owes its current incarnation to Lieutenant Colonel John McRae Gilstrap, who bought the castle in 1911 and spent the next 20 years restoring it to its former glory. They pass yet another romantic castle ruin, so redolent of Scotland's violent past. After breakfast on deck, 
Derek, Jeremy and Rob take the rib and head for the Isle of Skye. They rent a car and head north along the east coast of the island. The distinctive rock column, or tooth, is known as the Old Man of Store. Apparently considered a daunting prospect, it remained unclimbed until 1955. Nearby, they come across sheep being marked and sorted for the spring shearing. Do you use the dogs to get them in? Oh, I wouldn't, wouldn't manage otherwise. How many sheep have you got here? About 600. 600, really? How long have you taken you to get them all in? Oh, four and a half, five hours. How many dogs do you have working with you? I've only got the one. Which is your dog? That one. What's his name? Major. Major. And how long has it been? Ten. 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 Depends on the way the dog wants to work. This one is easy, it's easy enough. It'll take you six months. Major, a good one. Uh huh. What, the best you had? First dog. First dog. Yeah. He, he, biggest fan. Five or six years old. Look, it's quite a process, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Major, move over, mate. Yeah, yeah. Do all the hey, one. Put them in one pen, then you move yeah. them through and move them through and move them through. Well, that's the young ones. They're, they're, they're just a year old, these ones here, and they're we keeping them in to shear them, to get the wool off them. Okay. And then the rest are going back to the hill. The next month, and then they come in to get sheared. Okay. So let's get it, should we go down that side? Yeah, they've got quite handsome heads, haven't they? These are blackfish sheep for obvious reasons, and I think they're one of the most common herds to be seen in like, a highland type of sheep, black-faced. Yeah, listen to the boys, it's great listening to them working the animals. They continue north to Kilt Rock Cliff Face.
this give us a kind of lowdown on how the whole kind of thing works. This is the chanter that makes all the actual melody. The chanter, you call it? Chanter, yeah. Right. And these are the drones, so they just play, you know, the kind of... That noise. Right, that's the pipe, kind of. They're like yeah. the equivalent of a pipe on an organ or something, are yeah, so, Yeah, 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 the kind of, the drone, the bass kind of, bass right. drone and the tenor. And how do you draw air well, into this? Well, basically, because uh, it's too hard to blow this just if you were going to play it on its own, so um, you blow air into this and there's a... Oh, stop this gap goes thing. There into it. Yeah, there's a stop gap thing so the air doesn't come straight back out. Right. And then this kind of acts as. And so you use that, your elbow, do you? Yeah, so when you're not blowing, you're pushing with the elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this puts air in and your elbow pushes the air out. Yeah. And it pushes it out of that or it yeah. pushes it out of those? All of them, all four. All four? Yeah. Right, okay. Kilt Rock is named for its remarkable tartan patterning, so like a Scottish plaid. Back on the road again, and they are heading to the northernmost limits of Skye. See all those cuttings in the soil, Jeremy? Yeah. Down there, that's all um, peat. They've stopped doing it in Ireland now, haven't they? Yes, have they? Have, yeah. They've desecrated the, uh, the bogs there. But I mean, that's what all those cuts are, I think. Yeah. It's a rowan tree, which is a mountain ash, and it's very typical of, um, of, of moorland, Scottish moorland particularly. And you see the white flowers on it in spring now, the blossom, which turn into bright red berries in the autumn. And you can make rowan jelly out of it to go with your venison. Amazing how it's fun to purchase and grow. It's a beautiful place to end the day. So what are these, Roseanne? What do you call them? Well, they're called, the Latin name is Mechanopsis, and they're blue they're Himalayan poppies. I think they're the best gardens I've ever seen anywhere. No matter how many times you tell them, don't slam the door, they keep on doing it. Hey, you, you never slam the door, don't you? I'm the first mate, I'm perfect. That's definitely a show out there. That's the wonderful show we've seen. Probably a show. Yeah, yeah. 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 yes. yes. They're both capsized, and I almost died. <laughs>